Okay, good. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so I'm Jan from uh, SK12.com, South Korea. And uh, today I'd like to give a talk about the high performance network stack for Qbert based managed Kubernetes. Uh, okay. So uh, for the last year, we already introduced uh, our in-house built uh, MEC platform called Azure Stack. And Azure Stack actually is based on the Kubernetes. And uh, we added the Qbert add-on for uh, spawning the VM as well as the managed Kubernetes in this case. So uh, so the aim of Stack is to support uh, the heterogeneous workload, including VM and container and even the Kubernetes. And we also targeted to the emerging architecture CPU, uh, like including the Intel uh, CPU as well as the ARM uh, CPU as well. Uh, and also, since this is a, a MEC platform, so we are we um, we are pushing for low latency as, as well as a high throughput. Uh, okay. So this is uh, so actually today's talk is mostly about the Kubernetes, the, especially for the managed Kubernetes part. So uh, actually, it just takes support uh, provision multiple like a Kubernetes in this case, and the, today's talk is mostly for uh, the Kubert. Uh, based uh, managed Kubernetes, and actually, Azure also support uh, providing some other uh, types of uh, managed Kubernetes like Tanju and uh, EKS, AKS, and so on. Uh, okay, so uh, in order to prepare a production-ready Kubernetes cluster, uh, we need a set of uh, steps. So first of all, we need to we need to set the infrastructure uh, provisioning. Uh, it can be VM or uh, bare metal and so on, and including the network and storage and operations and so on. So we, this is typically done uh, at the first time. And after done that, uh, we can uh, bootstrap the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so in this in this step, where we typically install the Kubernetes control plane as well as the work node and so on. Uh, this can be done by a set of tools like a cube admin and the cube spray and the kops and so on. And finally, after we bootstrap the cluster, we can finally uh, can install a set of add-ons, including the HAM or maybe CNI and the CSI plugins and so on, to make sure that the Kubernetes cluster can be uh, functioning well. So uh, with the help of the cluster API uh, from the CNCF community, uh, this with this uh, cluster API, you can provision uh, uh, the Kubernetes cluster in a declarative way. Uh, and so on. So uh, in order to do that, we have first of all into one management cluster. And with this management cluster, we can spawn a, a set of workload cluster. And then we also call this workload cluster as a target cluster as well, and so on. And actually, there are a set of uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, like a provider, uh, to help the cluster API to spawn the, uh, the infrastructure. It can be bare metal or maybe VM and so on. And the most, uh, so actually, uh, as a infrastructure provider, uh, mostly in the community, uh, we can use OpenStack and uh, vSphere or v uh, AWS. And uh, recently, Kubernetes community also introduced uh, another uh, provider called the Cluster API provider, Kubert. Uh, I, I just call it CapK in this case. So with the, with the help of CapK, we can provision and manage the, uh, the managed Kubernetes over uh, the, um, the Kubert. So uh, there are a set of cust uh, like a custom resource uh, definitions in order to do that. So the first one is a machine. So this type of uh, a CRD has been introduced by the, the cluster API itself. And uh, for Kubert, we also need uh, some extra CRD is called the Kubert cluster and the Kubert machines and the Kubert machine templates and so on. And uh, there are also some core CRDs called cluster and machine and the machine deployments. And those are all needed in order to uh, bootstrap uh, a Kubernetes cluster in this case. So this part is, is can be, you can regard this as specific to the, uh, to the, uh, the Kubert itself. And the, for the other parts, it can be commonly used by uh, the other uh, types of um, infrastructure provider. So in order to create a cluster, um, first of all, we need to install a set of uh, CRDs first and the controllers and the providers to management cluster. 
And then we create objects called the cluster and the control plane and the set of uh, add-ons and machine deployments for the local node and so on. So assuming that we have one cl uh, cluster API controller and, uh, we, and uh, we ha so assuming that we want to create the cluster A using this definition, then this can be enforced uh, into the management cluster and the management cluster can create another target cluster A based on the uh, definition of what we have. So this is a just general like step to create one uh, local cluster. So KK is a Kubernetes native the cloud infrastructure for Kubert and they support two types of deployment model. The first one is a normal model. So with this model, we have a management and infrastructure cluster runs in a separated manner like this. And another types of a deployment model is a hyper conversion model, which means in this case, the management and the infrastructure cluster reside in the same, uh, in the same cluster in this case. And the, due to the uh, resource um, uh, like consumption issues, uh, the MEC pipe will typically deploy in this model, the second model, like a hyper conversion model. So this is the overall like architecture once we deploy the entire uh, uh, like a workload cluster over the Qbert. So underlying we have a management uh, Kubernetes and then we uh, install the Qbert as an add-on. And uh, also we have to install the, the cluster API controller. In this case, we install the 1.3 version. And uh, in order to bootstrap and uh, provide uh, the, the VM infrastructure, we have to install the CapK in this case. And the, for the networking part, we install the set of uh, CNIs. For the management purpose, we install the, the Calico. And uh, for the service network, we install the, uh, the SIRV for, for pushing for the fast network. And after that, we spawn a set of like uh, v VMs. And uh, over the VM, we install the workload cluster uh, with the help of CapK in this case. And over the, uh, in so inside the workload cluster, we also need to install a set of CNIs in this case. And uh, uh, we serve it a set of uh, CNIs called the Calico and train is that we performed uh, throughout uh, like the comparison uh, over the three types of CNIs and to see which one performs better uh, in this case. And after that, we can install a set of uh, workload over the uh, workload cluster in this case. So the problem would be encountered when we set up the managed Kubernetes using the Kubert is uh, inter-part communication, like the performance is suffered a lot. So as you can see, the control network performance degraded a lot because uh, as you can see, if we just use a Kubert to set up the, uh, the, the cluster, then the underlying like infrastructure typically rely on the vSwitch or IP tables and the eBPF. And, uh, over uh, so inside the VM, there are also a set of like a network stack, for example, like Kubernetes network stack and the VM network stack and so on. So in order to perform the inter pod communications, so the packet have to go through the, uh, the entire, like the three types of network stack in this case, and uh, this suffer a lot in terms of a performance wide. So typically in order to do this inter pod communication, we have to uh, set up an overlay like a network between the pod so in this case, uh, encapsulation has need to be done. And uh, if we do this encapsulation, then the double, uh, like a double tunneling overhead results in a more CPU like a consumptions. And uh, we also need to add uh, extra like a pack headers for each like uh, package. And so the network even can get congested more. Uh, another approach can be just without using the encapsulation. In this case, all the pod IP address has need to be exposed to the uh, physical switch. Uh, so in that case, we may have some IP completion issues or maybe duplicate IP range and, and so on. So the second underlay approach is not really recommended. So in the most of cases, we just use an overlay approach, especially for the managed Kubernetes case. So in order to resolve the inter communication performance issues, what we uh, have done is, uh, uh, we just propose a, a way to remove, maybe like a bypass some, um, uh, like a network stack in this case. So why not just remove uh, the VM network stack or maybe bypass the, net, the, the network stack and just directly attach the VM to the, uh, the underlying leak? Then the, 
then we can wave uh, some. Uh, so, in that case, so in this case, the two types of networks get like a VM network stack as well as a V-switch. This part can be removed. So in this case, the inter-part like, communication can be directly go through the uh, Kubernetes network stack then to leak and to another Kubernetes like, network stack and so on. So uh, for the primary network interface, this can only be used for the control plane point. For, for the secondary network interface, we can use for uh, inter-VM or inter-part communication purpose in this case. So there are a, a set of CNS has been introduced in the community. And uh, one of the most popular one is Selim, and it's highly leveraged eBPF uh, data plan acceleration technologies. Uh, actually, with this one, we can, uh, so acceleration can be done inside the kernel space. And uh, there are no inter, uh, like, uh, intervention in the user space networking. So all the like uh, uh, packet uh, uh, traverse can be just using the Linux kernel without using the, the user space networking. So the context to switching uh, count can be uh, the, like minimized in this case. So this is one of the very popular one. And the, another one is the Entra. Entra is uh, introduced by the uh, VMware and uh, they're high leverage OVS to set up uh, the overlay network. So the, you, they, pro, they support a set of like a tunneling, like a technologies I can show the, in the next slide. So actually this slide shows that uh, different like CNIs uh, provide different types of overlay protocols as you can see here. Uh, so the interesting part here is uh, they all support uh, software or like accelerations, like Calico use eBPF to accelerate the data plane and see them um, in, in the same way. And then try actually use a VSDP to, get to accelerate the data plane. But the interesting part here is, is that it, the uh, only Entra uh, provide the hardware uh, level like a uh, acceleration using the DPU or maybe smart leak. But without, uh, but regardless of the DPU or smart, we still can offload some of the stateless operations like the LSO and the ARO or maybe TSO to the community need as long as it support SROE uh, capabilities. So in order to, to use this type of hardware acceleration, what we can do is uh, we can, we need to use uh, the stateless tolling protocol. We call that STT. And actually, actually this product has been uh, already been standardized uh, by the IETF. And uh, the main idea of this approach is, um, uh, so, so without using STT, you know, not just, if assuming that we are just uh, using normal uh, packet and transfer that into the you know wire, then typical application generate application data stream and the TCP stack uh, adding up the headers uh, like the TCP and the IP and L2, and the inside the TCP and the IP, the uh, actual TCP stack as uh, some special like a metadata, and uh, using this metadata, the NIC card can segment the TCP uh, like uh, packets. Uh, typ typically, this type of segmentation uh, supposed to be done inside the TCP stack, but uh, this TCP stack typically implemented inside the kernel, then using the software way to uh, doing this TCP segmentation, uh, uh, we call a lot of like uh, CPU like cycles as well as uh, the performance like actually hurts a lot. So lots of uh, community already support TSO, like a TCP segment offloading feature, uh, as long as the TCP stack adding this special like metadata uh, inside TCP and IP like headers. But what if we use uh, some tunneling protocol? In that case, uh, this type of a special metadata cannot be added by the TCP stack. So in this case, uh, the NIC card cannot do in the uh, TCP segment offloading. So all the uh, segment offloading is supposed to be done inside the uh, research in this case. So we suffered a lot by the, uh, in a, the performance. So uh, STT actually solved this problem in a smart way. Actually, in, if, if we set, set up this STT uh, protocol, then the STT can add another special like a vSwitch metadata in our header. So by looking at this metadata, the NICAR can still do the TCP sets, the segment of loading, uh, just like it just does in, in the previous like way. So this is very smart way to, to do that. So actually OVS already support STT uh, protocol. So 
why not just using this STT to set up uh, the local of the clusters like a CNI uh, So we perform a set of like evaluations. Uh, this is the evaluation setup. So as you can see that we are underlying uh, for the management Kubernetes, we installed SRV CNI, and then we use multiple CNI to stitching the Calico and the SRV CNI together. And on the, uh, uh, the local Kubernetes side, we install the Calico and the Cilium and the entry CNI for comparison purpose. So we uh, we also done this in a, a uh, x86, uh, like a CPU architecture. Also, we also done this uh, for the ARM64, um, uh, like uh, in this server. And uh, this is the details back for each of it. Uh, interestingly, we use a different types of NICAR to perform uh, the evaluations. The first way is Intel uh, X710. And the second experiment is done just using Mellanox Connect X6 and so on. So this is an intra-host like container network performance. As you can see, uh, the, if, if the underlying CNI is OVS and the, uh, the workload cluster the CNI is entry, then the performance is pretty poor. So it almost like shows like one gigabit per sec, uh, even for the intra-host. But for the if we set up the SRV as underlying CNI and the entry STT as uh, the, the, uh, the local cluster CNI, then it shows that the best performance. Regardless of the MTU size, it always shows almost like uh, 20 to 30 gigabit per set, which is almost like uh, 30 times faster compared to the, uh, the baseline. For the inter-host uh, like, uh, performance, uh, the new card what we are using it, it support up to 10 gigabit per sec. And uh, with this uh, entry STT on SRV, it shows almost like uh, 9.4 gigabit per sec, which shows almost like the line rate speed uh, and, and so on. So this is uh, almost the trend compared to the other part. So so interestingly, if even if we are, we are using SRV as a, uh, the underlying CNI and they use the same or maybe some other entry Zenev tunneling, it doesn't really show the best performance with the very small MTU size in this case. So in order to implement that, what we can do is uh, we need to hear, uh, for, so uh, first of all, we have a cube admin control plane and the machine deployment. And we provide one Qvert machine template here in this case. And the CAPK will help us to generate the, the virtual machine uh, CR, custom resource, based on the Qvert machine template which we provide. So inside there, uh, we have one SRV like, interface in this case. And then we have a set of other like a cloud unit, uh, like a script and so on. And uh, we need to uh, implement another watcher to monitor uh, the, the virtual machine, the machine, the manifest. So as long as the one of the virtual machine manifest has been created by the CAPK, then we try to augment the manifest in order to add up some like uh, uh, MAC address for the, uh, the SRV interface in this case. And of course, we also need to create the, the network data secret as a reference. Uh, so on the next slide, I can show that uh, for the next network data, we need to add the detailed IP address for the uh, SRV interface, as well as the gateway and the name server and so on. So because uh, the reason why we have to do this is that we do not want to uh, do some self-host DHCP server, set up the DHCP server by ourselves because it's, uh, it restrict the infrastructure like uh, flexibility. So just by doing this, uh, DC server is not really needed. So all the IP address just directly assigned by the control plane in this case. After that, we need to install the CNI. In this case, it's Entra with the tunnel type STT that's been set it up using the cluster resource set. This is actually the experimental like features from the cluster API. So, so C API actually uh, just does all the things for us. So, so the only thing what we need, really need to do is we need to just generate the one uh, entry config map and another entry cluster uh, resource set which reference the entry config map in this case, like this. 
So it's all done, yeah. So if we do that, then it just boosts up all the performance a lot. So by far, uh, uh, we support three types of uh, OS distro, which is uh, Rocky and uh, Alma Linux. It's all like 8.5 to 8.7. And uh, we also support Ubuntu uh, 204. So the current version is uh, is ranging from 1.23 and to the 1.26 and so on. So these three types of uh, images of support hardware acceleration, but the, 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 but the limitation in this case is Iraqi Linux 9 and Ubuntu uh, 2020 doesn't get hardware accelerated because uh, uh, OVS STT is only available as a kernel space implementation in this case. And that uh, this the kernel module has been faded out to the kernel version higher than uh, 5.6. And uh, from the OVS 3.0, the kernel space implementation has been totally removed from the soft tree. So uh, this is only available for OBS 2.2.2.x in this case. And uh, those are pre-built uh, the Kubernetes images available. So you can just really download and you can you can try out. So those images can get uh, these hardware accelerations using commodity. So uh, finally, I'd like to show some simple demos in order to do that. Uh, so first of all, so so in this demo, uh, we generate uh, another CLI called HTCTL, and uh, you, th this is really handy, like a CLI uh, used to create uh, the, the managed Kubernetes in this case. So you just just call the create cluster, and then okay, and then uh, you need to specify which type, which type of a cube image that you want to use and the flavor of a master machine and the flavor of a worker machine and that the number of a master and the worker node in this case. So in order to, to do the, the performance-wide comparison, we create a two like a worker node. And uh, you also can specify the CNI plugins and the CSI and so on. And uh, make sure that, okay, sorry. Uh, so, so, so for the SRV, we select the SRV global like a network in this case. And for the others, we just use uh, the default settings. And uh, pretty much it is done. Then we just generate uh, one uh, cube Kubernetes cluster. Then we can use a list cluster CLI to see uh, the cluster what we just created. So we call the pulf cluster. And uh, it requires some time to get the provision. So after that, we can query the, the machines that has belonged to this cluster. So there are three machines. One is a control plane, two are worker node, and the all uh, each of the uh, like a node has been assigned to one default network and another. Uh, Oh, it looks as though he got disconnected. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, hopefully he can rejoin. Yeah, I agree. Um, he was getting close to time, but it looked as though he only had about two minutes of that demo to go. Maybe he'll be able to share it on the Slack channel.
In the meantime, I might start getting uh, our next presenters ready, uh, Ryan and Tomash. I hope that Shannon can come back. Oh, he's back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just get disconnected. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Do you want to very quickly try and um, uh, rush through the last little bit of the demo? We've got uh, one question in chat for you, um, and then we'll need to get ready for the next uh, presentation. Jian? Okay. So let me read the, the question. So did I understand correctly that your solution will only attach a single secondary interface to the v, uh, VMVR? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, right. I just uh, attach one secondary interface, SRV interface to the VM, and then we use that interface to uh, accelerate the entire networking like performance. So no Kubernetes service in this case, actually. So the Kubernetes service like interface is only used for uh, connect uh, the endpoint in this case. Amazing. Um, if if you want to try and finish um, finish your session in. in 60 seconds, is that possible? If, was there anything you had left to say from your, from your slides? So actually just, uh, I want to do a quick wrap up for the talk. So as a summary, we actually propose a way to maximize the managed Kubernetes network king like performance. And the, the, the interesting part is we are combining entry uh, CNSTT with the SRV pass through our technology and the, it, uh, it accelerates the performance a lot. And the proposed approach does not really rely on any smart and DPU like a hardware floating and it only needs uh, one leak which support SRV and that's it. So which is quite uh, common actually in this case. As a future work, we want to isolate the multi tenants like network traffic using the smart leak. And uh, also want to support more like a Linux distribution as a Kubernetes versions. And uh, as a finally, we we would like to implement a hardware acceleration external LB with the uh, Qvert Cloud Controller Manager. Uh, with, with with this, we can even accelerate the entire like uh, network stack, including the like external LB and so on. And and, and thank you. Amazing! Thank you so much. Um, uh... Lots of kudos in the chat, and some people have asked if you could please share your slides because you answered a lot of questions for them. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I will uh, share the slide. So, uh, where do I send the slide? Do I need to send slide to the, uh, uh, the organizers in this case? You, uh, if if you've got them in a um, like a, a publicly viewable spot, you can uh, share the link in say on the Kubert um, email list. Just so everyone sees oh, okay. it. Otherwise, okay. if you if you don't, you can send them to me, and I can put them on um, a Google Drive and make them available for everyone. Okay, I will just send it to you, and uh, you can share through the Google Drive. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.